Islands of Resilience. The Remarkable History of the Channel Islands British Legacy The Channel Islands are situated just off the coast of France and are notably part of the United Kingdom. They were originally part of the Duchy of Normandy, which England lost to France in the early 13th century. However, the islands remained under English and later British control. This raises the question of how the British managed to retain ownership of the Channel Islands for such a long time despite their proximity to France. Since the 10th century, the Channel Islands were considered part of the Duchy of Normandy, controlled by Du Crollo, a Viking who essentially secured the region through coercion with the French king. Later, Rollo's descendant, William, conquered England and ruled both territories separately. This intertwined the ruling dynasties of England and France, with the French kings demanding that the kings of England, who were also the Dukes of Normandy, submit to their authority. Predictably, the English kings refused, leading to centuries of conflict. In 1204, King John infamously lost all his territories in northern France, leaving the Channel Islands as the only parts of Normandy still under English rule. Nearly 800 years later, these islands still remain outside French jurisdiction. So, why did the British manage to hold on to the Channel Islands? It wasn't for lack of effort on the part of the English. John's successor, Henry III, continued to wage wars against France but achieved little success. In 1259, a significant turning point occurred. In exchange for renouncing his claim to Normandy, the French King Louis IX agreed to renounce his claim to the Channel Islands and recognize the English king as the Duke of Aquitaine. This peace lasted for about 80 years until the Hundred Years of War in the Wars of the Roses, during which the islands changed hands between the French and the English several times. Pope Sixtus IV, frustrated with the ongoing conflict, issued a decree declaring the islands permanently neutral. However, the French ignored this when they attempted to conquer the islands a year later. Eventually, both kingdoms agreed to the islands' neutrality which lasted until the late 17th century when William III revoked it to use the islands for raids on the French coast. Not much change until the Napoleonic Wars, when Napoleon briefly threatened the islands' ownership. British naval supremacy prevented the French navy from protecting the landing, and Napoleon had more significant concerns. After the war, France's interest in retaking the islands waned. The new French monarchies and later republics preferred to have Britain as a potential ally against the rising Prussia, so the islands were not a priority. Furthermore, in 1801, the British monarchy formally renounced its claim to the French throne. Consequently, the Channel Islands were declared separate entities under the British crown, no longer part of Normandy. Since the Napoleonic Wars were the last conflicts between Britain and France, there were no further opportunities for France to reclaim the islands. In summary, the Channel Islands remained under British control due to a combination of historical agreements, changing priorities, and British naval superiority, ultimately solidified by the islands' reclassification as a separate entity under British rule.